Hi, my name is Kevin Grote, and today I'm going to be teaching you how to play Flourish by Starling Games. In Flourish, you'll be building a beautiful garden filled with trees, paths, and all sorts of other gorgeous features. So let's jump in, shall we? First, let's have a look at all the components that come in the box. The core game includes 98 cards, 7 scoreboards, 7 3D walls, 24 ribbon tokens, 3 metal victory tokens, and 1 victory card. Everything else in your Signature Edition box is intended for use with the expansions, and we'll talk about those later. For the setup, start by giving each player a scoreboard set to zero. If you've just opened your game and haven't assembled your scoreboards yet, you can find a simple graphic showing you how they piece together at the beginning of the rulebook as well as the walls. Speaking of walls, place one wall between each player. Next, shuffle the deck and deal six cards to each player face down. Place the deck in the middle of the table and you're ready to begin. I've set up my table simulating a four player game. Flourish is played over the course of four rounds. During each of these rounds, you'll play three cards into your garden, leaving you with a total of 12 cards in your garden at the end of the game. The actual gameplay and rules of Flourish are quite simple. There are no turns, everyone will act simultaneously. First, you'll choose one card from your hand to add to your garden. Place your chosen card face down in front of you. Then you will select one card from your hand to pass to the neighbor on your left. Then one card from your hand to pass to the neighbor on your right. Your neighbors are the players sitting to your immediate left and right. When passing a card to your neighbor, place it face down on their side of the wall. Once everyone has done this, everyone will reveal their played card. Now, draw the two cards that were passed to you by your neighbors. Then draw one additional card from the top of the deck. Now repeat this process until you've played three cards in front of yourself. Once you've played three cards, the round will end and you'll score your cards that have an end of round scoring ability. Keep in mind that end of round scoring abilities from cards played on a previous round will not score again. You'll only score the cards that you played during this current round. However, the symbols on the cards you played on previous rounds will still be counted when totaling up points for scoring abilities. After playing three rounds, you should have nine cards in front of you. For the fourth and final round, you will collect the cards that were passed to you by your neighbors, but you will not draw a new card from the top of the deck. This means for round four, you will only have five cards to work with. Now, instead of just playing one card, you'll actually choose three cards from your hand and lay all three face down in front of you. You will not pass any cards to your neighbors. The two cards remaining in your hand will be discarded. Once all players are ready, they reveal the three final cards in their garden. If any of these cards include end of round scoring, score for those now. Once you've tallied all the points from the end of round scoring abilities, it's finally time to score your end of game scoring abilities from all 12 of your cards. So next, let's talk about different ways to play the game. When setting up the game, you'll want to decide whether you're playing a cooperative or competitive game. That's right, you can play Flourish either way. If playing competitively, then you'll play through the four rounds just like I explained, and once everyone has finished their end of game scoring abilities, whoever has the most points is the winner. If tied, the player with the most unique plant symbols wins. If still tied, the player with the most unique stone symbols wins. If still tied, the player with the most end of round abilities wins. If somehow players are still tied, the players share the victory. If players decide to play cooperatively, then communication will be somewhat limited during the game. Players may not talk about any cards they have in their hands, but they're free to talk about any cards that have already been played. At the end of the game, all players will add up their scores to come up with a total score for the group. Now, reference the cooperative medals chart to see which medal you have won. Next is just a few small changes when playing with two players. During the game, when you would normally pass one card to the neighbor on your left and one to the neighbor on your right, you'll just pass two cards to your only other neighbor. They essentially represent both neighbors. So when scoring abilities refer to either or both of your neighbors, you'll only be referring to the one other player. Also, when scoring path cards, which normally score points based on stone symbols in both your neighbor's gardens, instead you'll score points for these stone symbols in your neighbor's garden and also in your own garden. So now, let's talk about the anatomy of a card. 
That way you can understand how to maximize your points. If a card contains a scoring ability, it will be in the upper left, which will score at the end of the round, or in the bottom right, which will score at the end of the game. The symbols on the left edge of the card are plant symbols, and in the bottom left will be a stone symbol or a plant name. Each game comes with a few reference cards, which will help you remember what each of the symbols mean when scoring your cards. Let's jump right in. A number next to a plant icon means that you'll get that many points for each of those plant icons in your garden. If a card shows two different plant icons next to numbers, you'll get to score points for both of those plant types. However, if there are two plant icons but they're separated by a line, then when it's time to score, you must choose which of the two types of plant icons you're going to score for. The plant icon you do not choose will not gain you any points. If a card shows two plant icons and two neighbor icons with a line through them, that means you will choose one of your neighbors, either the player on your right or left, and score points based on how many of these plants are in their garden. This one here means you will receive six points if you have an equal number or more of the indicated plant type than either one of your neighbors. This one means that you'll receive nine points, but you must have an equal number or more of the indicated plant type than both of your neighbors. When comparing if you have an equal number or more than your neighbors, you must have at least one of the indicated plant type to qualify. This one here means that you'll receive nine points if you have at least five of any one plant type in your garden. This one gains you nine points if you have one or more of each different plant type in your garden. Earlier, I mentioned the stone symbols that are sometimes present in the bottom left corner of a card. Well, the next few scoring abilities will score for the stone symbols present in your garden and in your neighbor's gardens. This number next to the stone symbol means you will score that many points for each of these stone symbols in your garden. This scoring ability shows a small plant icon in the top corner of the stone symbol. You'll score this many points for every matching stone symbol that also has the matching plant icon. This next one just means that you'll score 9 points if you have at least one of the indicated stone symbol in your garden. And the last one on your reference card means that you gain 9 points if you have 3 or more of the indicated stone symbol in your garden. There are, however, a few extra scoring abilities that can't be found on the reference cards or in the rulebook. However, with what we know of the different icons, we can easily figure out what they mean. This one will gain you three points for every wall stone symbol present in both of your neighbor's gardens. This one will gain you nine points if you have at least two of the indicated stone symbols in your garden. This one shows a blank stone symbol. This means that you get to score one point for each stone symbol you have in your garden, regardless of type. All right, that covers the basics of how to play, but there is one unique card I wanna talk about, the Rosa Alba. There's only one Rosa Alba in the game, and you'll notice that it contains all five different plant types. The Rosa Alba is like your wild card, representing all the different types of flowers. When scoring, the Rosa Alba counts as only one copy of any one plant symbol each time it's used. For scoring, it can be counted as different plant types within the same round. So, for example, let's say I just finished the round and will now do my end of round scoring for the three cards I played this round. First, I count up all the mushrooms I have in my garden and score one point for each. My Rosa Alba counts towards this total. Next, I count up all the green leaves I have in my garden and compare it to my neighbors. I have two, but because I can count my Rosa Alba, I have a total of three. My neighbor to my left has three green leaves, and my neighbor to my right has five. Because I have an equal number of green leaves as one of my neighbors, I can gain the six points. Finally, I will count up all my roses and gain one point for all of them, along with one point for all my green leaves. However, I can only count my Rosa Alba as one of these plant symbols. Although it can be counted as different plant types during the same scoring round, it can only be one plant type for each scoring ability. The core rules also offer a few variants, including solo mode, all of which can be found in your rulebook. Okay, now that we've covered the core game, let's jump into the Friends and Follies expansion. The expansion comes with 15 friend mini cards, 35 3D folly buildings, and one victory plaque. You may play with either or both of these expansions at the same time. Playing with the friends expansion is simple. During the setup, randomly deal two friend cards to each player face down. Players may look at them, but they should be kept secret during the game. After the end game scoring, each player will reveal their two friend cards. 
then each player gets to score for only one of their friend cards. The Follies expansion adds 3D buildings to your garden. During the setup, each player will be given five Follies, one of each color. At the end of each round, you'll have the opportunity to place these Follies onto cards in your garden. Each card may only hold one Folly, and Follies will score at the end of the game for cards they are adjacent to or cards they are placed on. At the end of each round, before placing Follies, you may also choose to rearrange cards that were placed during this round. When placing Follies, they must be placed onto a card that contains at least one plant icon that matches the plant icon on that Folly and they must be placed onto cards that were played during the current round. During the fourth round, when placing your final three cards, you may choose to place them outside your 3x3 grid adjacent to any of your previously played cards. At the end of the game, your follies are worth two points for each plant type that matches the plant type on the folly, on the card it was placed on, or on any adjacent cards. Diagonal cards are not considered adjacent. Adjacent cards that do not contain any plant icons are worth 3 points instead of 2. You may place any folly on the Rosa Alba card, and every folly that is adjacent to the Rosa Alba may count it towards their score. Each folly that you are unable to place is worth negative 5 points. To give you an example, this is the Mushroom Folly, and there are 3 Mushroom icons adjacent to and on its card. That's 6 points plus the three points for the adjacent card that has no plant icons, making this folly worth a total of nine points. Our next folly has five matching plant icons on its card and adjacent cards, making it worth 10 points. The next folly has four matching plant icons, plus the Rosa Alba, giving us 10 points, and another six points, three from each adjacent card without plant icons, for a total of 16 points for this folly. The next folly is placed on the Rosa Alba, no other adjacent cards have roses, and they all contain some type of plant icon, so our total for this folly is 2 points. The final folly could not be placed, making it worth negative 5 points. And that is how you play Flourish, with the Friends and Follies expansions. I hope you found this video helpful, and I hope you have a wonderful time building a beautiful garden. I'll see you in the next video.